Today, we're going to be reviewing the latest generation Chevrolet Corvette Stingray. Wait, that, that doesn't sound right. I mean, this key here says Porsche on it. Well, sorry about that, but uh, due to technical difficulties, we're actually going to be reviewing the latest generation Porsche Cayman. To give you a basic rundown of what happened here, I was promised a latest generation Corvette Stingray for the day. However, I ended up getting given this. So if I seem a little bit unhappy in this review, that's probably why. But this is the last generation Cayman before they go to turbo and get a significant drop in power in the base model. So let's check it out. It's quite a looker from the outside. The driving position is pretty good too. The steering wheel is pretty good, probably a bit thicker than I would like, but that's all right. Um, the seats are all right. They're not perhaps as supportive as I was expecting out of the car. I was expecting something to wrap around a bit more. They're perfectly comfortable, but I feel like in harder cornering, you can start to flip around a little bit. Um, center console is nice. The fit and finish of everything is nice. A bit too many dials and buttons going on. It makes it kind of a little bit confusing, but the overall feel of the surfaces is quite nice. Okay, that's enough talking. Let's get driving. To start with, you got to use this weird key thing that's not actually a key. And you shove it into this port that's kind of like a key port. And then fire it up. Get a nice bark to it. Okay, so this car has a PDK gearbox equipped, which is like a, um, a dual clutch automatic. Most people probably know about it. The Porsche system is particularly good, but I feel it's let down by the implementation of its paddle shifters. Now, they're kind of weird. They push forward to shift up, pull back to shift down. And on occasion, this has caught me out. I'm just driving it now, just in normal mode, as it goes started up. And I gotta say, like, to start with, the steering feel is kind of disappointing me compared to the other Porsche. But, but I did have a go in sport mode before and did get a bit better. So let's not waste any more time in normal mode. Let's put it on sport mode. Traction control off. So in sport mode, everything's sharpened up that little bit. The throttle's a bit sharper, the steering's a bit sharper. In saying that, I still think I prefer the steering of my 86 a little bit more. Obviously, the extra power of the Cayman is nice. base model came in. In saying that, still not a cheap car, so you know. Now this was going to be the part where I talk about the engine. Now the problem with that is, is it's really hard to kind of find. If you look in here, I know it's there, but I have no idea how to open the cover on it, and that kind of makes it hard for me to show it to you. Um, failing that, there is actually a decent amount of room in the boot. Well, this boot at the rear is not very big, but the front at the front is actually quite generous. So let's just use this opportunity while I'm stuck behind traffic to just talk about some of the other details of the car. 
So fit and finish are really nice throughout. Everything feels really solid and that's nice. Obviously there's that slight room issue as you can see by my luggage here. It's interesting, the 911 I drove previously had much better steering feel and I think that's because this is running the electric power steering as opposed to the hydraulic power steering and it feels like it's been somewhat muted and killed a bit on the inside. Now on the drive back down the California coastline, I think finally it's starting to see where the money has gone in this car. It's not so much that it handles better than a lot of other cars or that it performs better. It, it, it does handle better than most, but like something like an 86, which is pretty much on par for the handling and a bit below on the feel, it's not where the money's going. The money is going into making an extremely capable cruiser that's really comfortable and still handles like those cars which aren't perhaps so comfortable. So I'm, I'm just doing this drive, I've been driving all day, I'm still really comfy, like nothing is sore on me and I think that is the true essence of what they achieved in this car. It's a nice luxury car that handles really well and for that I give it respect. But if I was going to have a car for myself where I don't care so much about the ride quality, I'd probably take the 86 over it despite them being completely different price brackets. Sorry people.